face with a, a dirty knife, and that's not good. Let me get this cleaned a little bit. Get down the beige in the center. Just run off there. Spread it out. Just spreading the second one out and have a slightly dirty knife, but it's really good to clean a cup out with, I'll tell you that much. And this is the best, I can't remember who was the first person that showed this, but if it was Gina DeLuca, I, I'm telling you, if you don't use this, you should, because this is the easiest spreading tool ever. The cake one was nice. I believe that was Sandra that showed us how to use that, but the it wasn't as easy to use as you might have thought. Now I'm going to try to go to the edge a little bit more, just so I have it wet, because when it's dry and my air conditioning is running behind me, it doesn't seem to like to carry the paint off. So I'm trying to spread this pretty thin, but have silicone in this bottom in this base coat and I'm trying to get the paint to where it the silicone will raise up from it. Now I am using a this is a MDF tabletop if you will. I have it on a turntable from IKEA but I'm doing it on an MDF board that I did use a primer and paint the same color that I'm using here, which is bare. And all I'm going to do is put just a little bit more of bare paint, if I could get it open. And then I have, I have a cup with, with black and try to get it in there and then put a little bit more on here so it's a lot more fluid because not having the base coat fluid didn't seem to help me on the other one, although it turned out pretty and I've got it drying and I did it in another video but take this, oh, I'm using it on a turntable it's a little bit easier on my old back if you want to be an artist, start while you're young and don't take, just try, just keep trying stuff. It's art, not science in that regard. It's your artistic eye. Now that I've got this covered pretty much, I'm gonna take the paints that I have put together in a cup and the next best tip that I got was the silicone cups because as much as you wanna think that these plastic cups, no matter what ones you're using, they don't bend and you crack one, it's, it's a nightmare. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about products to use. And I am, beyond a doubt, one of the newest people to do this. Now since I'm going for a rock, a kind of a rock look, but on this one I'm gonna do just a little different. I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna go around in a circle. I'm just gonna do it as if it was a ring pour and see how it comes out. That's actually coming out a little bit better. It'll be more silver towards the center, but look at that. That looks like a giant vortex. I'm gonna go in the opposite direction and see if I can get, because it's gonna come out black, and I'm gonna see if I can get it to be, all I have to do really is move the table. Move the, turntable and this is going to be more okay let's go in the other direction so I can balance it out a little bit more the other ones I was going for was for a granite look this one I'm going to go for is going to be for a kind of a cosmo look a cos, cosmic look and I'm getting some good cells probably because I put so much silicone in. And I know you're not supposed to put too much silicone in, but you know what? I haven't been very successful with getting a bunch of 
cells. So I guess I went over the top. I went the other way. I'm going to quickly torch this. If I could find my torch. There we go. Turn it on. Quickly torch it to see what I can get any air bulb pulls out. And then I'm going to stretch it a little bit. I didn't use too much paint. I probably could have used more paint in the cup. I did not. I'm out of paint there. I've got some of the beige, but I'm kind of liking that in the center. So let me see what I've got left in here that I can squeak out to make a darker center, just a little bit. Let's see if I can get a little bit of darkness in there. And hopefully some of this is recording. I do this mostly for my education, I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm trying to uh, learn myself and sometimes it's difficult for me to remember exactly well not difficult it's almost impossible for me to remember what I did so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat just a little I have a little extra black paint right here and I'm going to literally just put a dab in the middle and pretend that that was part of the original pour so it has a little bit deeper color and now I'm going to stretch it. See, I wanted to have that vortex look. And hopefully I won't get my shirt all in this. And we can see a little bit on it. But Oh, good. This is going to move. I don't want to stretch everything too much. Let me just fix this in the center. Because that looked odd. Get that out of there. And now let's see if I can stretch just enough to give it some interest for the whole. I'll go really drastic on one side, and then I'm going to bring it all the way back before, before it goes off the edge. I don't mind when the colors run off the edge of a surface, but for some reason, sometimes that little bit of negative space this is going to look like a raptor's eyeball. But, you know, sometimes that little bit of negative space defines the pattern. Now, I'm sure I'd get a lot of um, criticism, but I uh, kind of I kind of like that. That's why I chose the background color to be in the colors that are being used. And I am just loving this. If it stays like this, I will be very, very happy. I'm just trying to give it an equal distance. Hard to do when you're standing over it, watching paint fly off your surface. But I'm not unhappy with it so far, guys. This is pretty good for a beginner. I've only been doing this since March. Started getting my items together, and let me tell you something. You could spend a fortune, or you could look around your house, yet probably half of the items that you need are already in your house if you've had a household for longer than a couple years. Now, you can see it's almost to the edge on that one side, so I'm just working it. Oh, that's great. Wow. I am loving that. And, again, I'm not trying to do it too fast. Another rookie mistake, so I'm going to come back the other direction so we don't lose too much of the form on the other side but I don't mind it having more definition or less definition I should say and just a little bit more coverage and even putting that black in the center you can see oh we're almost off the edge son of a gun I did not want to do that but I guess it's okay to go a little bit off the edge shoot I didn't want to do that, but I'm going to sit down and relax, and give it a second, and then see if I can work it towards, if I can work it up back towards this way a little bit without it. Yeah, I know why you guys use the sticks that you had, because it has the color on it, and I am trying to get a little bit more of the I should use my OXO in here. That's what I should use. This thing will get paint out of nowhere. Kind of 
the world's best scraper and it's an omelet it's for making omelets can you stand it this is like a ten dollar item and let me tell you something it's better than any of the tools that I bought and believe me I bought many hundreds of dollars worth of stuff and I haven't sold anything but I'm not looking to sell things what I'm looking to do is create stuff that I like so here's the way I do my art I create art that I would want to keep forever and by that I mean yeah I'll try different color combinations and I will try the different patterns and different procedures if you will but it has to be something that, if it were to stay with me and my partner for the rest of our lives, would we be happy to look at it? And you know what? I can honestly say that for most of the stuff that I have that I've created, and this, believe me, is nowhere near anywhere near the stuff that I've created, I don't mind it being around. It is part of our decor. And I, my wonderful brother who I love dearly once said to me at one of my shows because I have quite a variety of art from gourd art to just crafty items he said who makes all this stuff and I said well I make it he said really and I said yeah really I said there's no one else helping me I would love it I would love to show people this I would love to work with others in collaboration and they can tell me how to do things better or how to have an easier time of it and I would love that but I do it because I I love to create stuff if I'm creating something I'm not destroying something else and it's not hurting anybody and the back of this is gonna have to be done it's not done right now and I'm kind of filling in now this probably is frowned upon by most artists but I didn't really want it to go over to the edge as far as it did and it did so now I'm trying to compensate for that this one I'm not trying to go with a granite look I'm trying to go with a circular uh, more 3d ish look and so far I'm not doing too bad I don't see anything spooky so as my friends say, oh, that look, there's something spooky in there. Oh, I never try to put anything spooky in a painting. Trust me, not if it's going to stay in my house. I'm afraid of the dark sometime. No, not really. But again, the items that you create, and as far as commission work goes, no. I wouldn't, I did commission work once or twice, and it was the most stressful time I've had doing any kind of art. And I say that because I'm not trying to make art to be stressed. What I want is art to, that I want to look at. Art that I want to have someone say, wow, that's great, did you create that? Yep, I did. And it was creatively done. My mother named my company, it must be almost 15 years ago, maybe more. And she's gone now, but hopefully I'm still making her proud by oh this is coming out great yeah I like it a little darker and a little more and it's going off the edge anyway guys so I might as well have a good time with it right but she I said mom I don't I need a name for my company and she says well Angela your stuff is so creatively done and I said well thanks mom I think that's the name of the company so thanks Anna we miss you and every time I do something I want to make her proud don't have any kids to make me proud but hopefully as her kid I'm making her proud so I'm getting fingerprints on the back which I was trying not to do and I'm gonna stretch this way a little bit more so we since we went off the edge on everywhere else I might as well keep going right and I still have a pretty good on camera that looks pretty 3d ish so which way should I tilt again if you were if you were here what would you do would you say stop or would you keep going whoops I see an edge here now see see now when I see an edge I want to stretch it so it's now it has to look like it's all coming off has changed my mind from not going over the edge and keeping negative space in one direction to now letting it run off the edge so you get that nice this is a table 
so I'll be using a polyacrylic on it to protect it and hopefully it'll be in my studio or my living room or our living room Ken and I and we can enjoy it this kind of has a raptor looking thing going there <laughs> it's that darkness in the center made it look like a real eyeball but I like I like to have some definition and if they could see how I'm I'm trying to stretch it back a little bit more so it has more this is a heavier tabletop than I'm used to this is not as light as a canvas trust me guys so it's a little more it's a little bit harder to do it when you're younger or do it while you're in shape or whatever but um oh now I got this space here see I'm gonna keep doing this until where's Ken so he could tell me to stop <laughs> But again, I'm touching the edge now so it'll draw the paint off that is on top. And hopefully, here it comes. I don't know if you can see that. This is my big pizza pie here. I'm not coming as much as I want. So I'm going to help it along just a little bit. Just cheat, just a little, guys. Just a little. I don't want to cheat very much, but I want to cheat just enough to make it look deliberate. Take some of the color here and kind of has that gray edge so we'll just call that a banding. I put some silver in at the last minute that I really wasn't intending to use. However, it doesn't look bad. It's just a little grayer than I normally than I normally would would like. I like more of the bronze but if I add any now it would look just like that added. It wouldn't look like it was done on purpose or originally. It would look added. So one more tilt towards me to bring that center, uh, that eyeball, if you will, just a little bit more to the center and give me some of that darkness that I like. And then just about, if I had to keep this under 18 minutes, I've got 30 seconds to do so. And if this goes on YouTube, I hope everyone likes it. I'll be making a channel. I'll be trying to promote my work. But again, the work that I do is for your enjoyment. And to be honest with you, it's for Ken's enjoyment and for my enjoyment. If you like it, I want to say subscribe, but I don't even have a channel yet. So, I mean, I have a channel, but it's not up and running. When I do, so... This will be one of the first ones, and then you can subscribe, but that's it. I'm done, and if I can turn off my camera, that'll be even better. I've got dirty hands, but this is Angela with Creatively Done. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments. Let me take off a pair of gloves here and see if I can stop the camera. I can do that. See? Wear two pairs of cameras.